I want to discuss two spreads that give us an indication of the different rates or the different yields between a government bond and a corporate bond. So we assume that treasury bonds are default risk-free. And corporate bonds, even for a really sound corporation, have at least some default risk. So we expect that the corporate bond is going to be going to have a higher yield than the government bond to compensate investors for the risk they're taking. How big is that differential? Well, that's given by these spreads. So the first spread is what we call the G spread or the government spread. And it's the difference between the yield on treasury bonds and the yield on corporate bonds of the same maturity. So if you've heard about you know, the spread between corporate and, government, uh, corporate and government bonds, this is probably the one you're familiar with. We simply find the yield to maturity for both of the bonds, and then we subtract the yield of the government bond from the yield of the corporate bond, and that's our G spread. And the yield to maturity is simply the interest rate that makes the present value of the future cash flows equal to the price the bond is selling for. And you can solve that with a financial calculator. You can solve that um, in Excel using the rate function. And we'll do that shortly when I show you how to do this in Excel. The second is what we call the Z spread or the zero volatility spread. And this is that, this is going to be a little bit different. To price a bond, the technical way you should do it is not to use one interest rate throughout your whole calculation, but to use a different interest rate for each period you're discounting by. What do I mean by that? Well, we have a yield curve, which shows us the different interest rates for different maturities for Treasury securities. So let's say it's 1% in the first year, it's 1.5% in year two, 2% in the third year. So you would discount the first year's cash flow using that 1% rate. You discount the second year's cash flow using the 1.5% discount rate. You discount the third year's cash flows by using the 2% uh, discount rate. So you use the specific interest rate for that period. And then once you calculate that, okay, you can get the price, of, you know, you've taken the present value, you can sum it up, you can get the price of the bond. So what the Z spread is, it's that extra factor you have to add to that spot rate. Um, interest rate so that the corporate bond equals its selling price. So the present value of its cash flows equals its selling price. So you set up the present value equation and you've got the government yield and you add some factor Z to it to get your discount rate. So let's say we work out that that Z is 1%. Then that means that you know, if the government bond rate is 1% in the first period, we're going to use 2% there. If it's 1.5% in the second period, that spot rate, we're going to use 2.5%, and so on and so on. Okay, so you can solve for this value either through trial and error or using the solver function in Excel. So let's go to Excel, and perhaps this will be clearer when we look at this. So I have an example here, and I have these different spot rates. See, the rates are different. Sometimes you'll, what you'll do is you'll assume, or if you're using the same interest rate, you're assuming a flat yield curve. That is, that the rates don't change at all. So it's 2% every year, you know, for the five years. Then you would just use 2%. But here it's going up. Right, this is an upward sloping yield curve. So you have 2.15% in the first year. So you would discount the first year's cash flow by that. The second year's cash flow would be discounted by 2.25% for both periods. Okay, 
third year's cash flows by 2.3%, et cetera. Okay, so let's see what we have here, all right? What we have is we're given a corporate bond price and we have a government bond as well. We don't know what the price of the government bond is, but we have par values. They're both the same par value. They both have the same coupon rate and they both mature in five years. So let's work this out here. And what are the cash flows going to be? The cash flows are going to be equal to the par value. I'm going to get to the F4 key because I want to copy this across times the coupon rate. I'm going to hit the F4 key again. All right, so it's $50 each year. And I'll copy this the whole um, for all five years. And in that last year, you also get back the par value or the face value. So the cash flows are 50, 50, 50, 50, and 1,050. And what we want to do is let's find the price of the government bond first. So what are the cash flows? What's, what are the present value of the cash flows going to be equal to? They're going to be equal to um, this cash flow divided by 1 plus this interest rate. raised to that year's power. And I'm just going to copy this across. And because I didn't lock it, this is going to use this interest rate to compute this. This is going to use this interest rate to compute it. And if I want to know what the price of this bond is, I can just sum up all these values. And the price of the bond is $1,112.39. So let me type that in here. So now we have the price for the government bond. We have the price for the uh, corporate bond. We can find the yield to maturity for both. And one way to do that, or probably the best way or easiest way in Excel, is to use the rate function. So we need the number of periods, that's five. We need the payment, um, which is just 50. The present value is the price of the bond, and that's going to be negative. And the par value of the bond, or the future value of the bond. So this is 5.1%. And if I just copy this over, I will get 2.58% for the government bond. Do these numbers make sense? Well, yes, they do. They do because this one's selling at a discount, so the interest rate should be above the um, coupon rate. This one is selling at a premium, so this yield to maturity should be below the coupon rate. That is, interest rates have gone down. And what's the G spread? The G spread is just going to be this corporate yield to maturity minus the government yield to maturity and I have 2.5229 percent. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to find that Z spread. So I have here, I'm going to put in just a value of zero percent and I'm going to say this equals what's in this cell, and I'm just going to copy this over. So they're all going to be the same value. That's what the z-spread is. It's the constant amount that you add to the spot rate. And what's the present value going to be? The present value is going to be the same formula we had before. In fact, let me show you the formula if you're not familiar. Let's see. So this one is B12, right? The cash flows are par value times um, the coupon rate. And the present value here is what, what I'm interested in is B5, right? The cash flows here divided by 1 plus this interest rate here raised to this power.
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add plus this C factor. Okay, it's not going to change because I have zero in there. I'm going to copy this across. All right, and if we want to see the formula again, here I've simply added what's in B8, right? And here it's going to be, you know, same thing. So they're just going to keep adding these, this factor in. All right, let's see here. All right, let me remove that. And let's say I put in a factor of 1%. Notice the price of the bond went down. Okay, that's not a high enough Z spread because we're trying to get to 995.75. Let's try 2%. Okay, better but still not high enough. Let's try 3%. So this is the trial and error part. Okay, a little too high. So it's going to be close to the G spread. So if I put in 2.5%, we'll be pretty close. And we are, right? 995.75, this is 996.80. If we want to get the exact number, we can use, you know, so we could keep guessing here, but let's use the solver function in Excel. So you go to data, and here it says solver. If you don't have solver in there, you can right click um, here, and you can say customize the ribbon, and then you'll go to add ins, Excel add ins, you click go, and just make sure the solver add in. Is, is checked off. All right, I've already done that. All right, so I'm going to go to Solver, and we're going to tell it this is the object we want, what's here, the price. So that's in cell uh, H3, and we want to set it equal. So the Solver function will let you find maximum values, minimum values, but well, we want the value to be equal to the price of the bond, which is 995.75, which I already typed in here. I could also put a, the cell number in. So I'm going to say solve. Wait a minute, let me go back. Let me go back there. Forgot to tell it what else to do, solver. So I said here, and by changing this variable, which is in cell b8. So you got to make sure you tell it what to change so that, um, you know, until you get to 995.75. Okay, so I'm going to say equals, or I'm going to say okay, and I'm going to say okay again. And there it came up with 2.5243%. So a little bit different than the G spread. But this is the value you have to add, and here I didn't show as many decimal places. I just expanded this so that these two would look different. If I just put uh, two decimal places, they'd both say 2.52. So you can see they're a little bit different. And here I'm going to put in the, the value of this plus this. And I'll just copy this across. Okay, so the values will be a little different. And I did that so that I can plot them. So let me just see if I can plot these. So if you can't remember, you know, what kind of graph you want, I always just go to insert and recommended charts. And this is the one I want here. And I'm going to say, okay, and it's a little bit bigger than I would like it. I'm going to slide it. Oh, oh, oh. Slide it over here, and you can see that this is the spot rate curve, and this is the uh, spot rate with that Z um, spread. So the difference here is that Z spread, and you can see you have that higher. And you can edit the series so that you have, you know, we could type in here, you know, yield curve. All right, and we could change the you know the names of the series and things like that. But you can kind of see it's a parallel shift up. So pretty straightforward way to do it to take advantage of Excel, right? The G spread and the Z spread are really quite similar. 
but um, uh, computed slightly differently. So I hope that's helpful and I hope that helps you to understand the difference between these two spreads and how you can compute them in Excel.